Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and his Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord to which I direct your attention for our meditation and learning here this morning is taken from our second lesson, James chapter 1, verses 19 through 27. And I'd like to focus your attention to begin with for on verses 19 and 20 and then 27. My dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry, because human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. Religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this, to look after orphans and widows in their distress, and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. This is the word of our God. In the name of Jesus Christ, who has provided all that we need for this life and for the life to come, my dear friends, how forgetful are you? Kids, have you ever forgotten to do your chores? And if so, how did that turn out for you? Adults, have you ever forgotten a loved one's birthday? Or if you're married, did you ever forget your anniversary date? Oh, that can be so embarrassing, can't it? And in fact, being forgetful can also be dangerous. If someone forgets to take their medication, if someone forgets to buckle up, that can be life-threatening. But there are also times when being forgetful is a good thing. For example, in the realm of athletics, if you're a pitcher and you've just served up a home-run meatball that's been knocked out of the park, you need to forget about that last pitch and now focus on getting the next batter out. Focus on the pitches that are ahead of you. If you are second, third, or further down the line child in your family, it's a good thing that your mother forgot about the pain that she experienced when your first sibling was born, or you wouldn't be here. And so forgetfulness can be a blessing, can't it? It can be a good thing. So as we continue our sermon series, working through the book of James, we will see today that one aspect of having a living and active faith, a faith that works, is having a faith that is forgetful. So what I want you to do today is to go on and go on an adventure with me this morning, working through these verses of James 1, 19 to 27, to understand in what way the Lord wants us to become forgetful as we live out our faith in Jesus. So let's begin by examining four statements that I've drawn out of this text for our review. Statement number one, everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak. Statement number two, be slow to become angry because human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. Number three, humbly accept the word planted in you which can save you. And number four, Look after orphans and widows in their distress. Now, did you sense or identify a common theme in all of these? Let's review quickly. If you spend more time listening to what others have to say about their lives and what is going on in their world, then who are you forgetting about? Think of the last times you became angry. Were you angry and upset because... Someone else didn't get their way, or because you didn't get your way? It says, humbly accept the word that is planted in you. The Bible tells us that its words are true. And so what does that mean we need to do with our ideas and thoughts that don't line up with God's word? And lastly, look after orphans and widows in their distress. So if you're investing in orphans and widows people who cannot pay you back for the good that you're doing for them, who are you not investing in? Who are you overlooking? In all of these areas, James is telling us to overlook ourselves, isn't he? He's saying, forget about yourself. Focus outward rather than inward. But we ask ourselves, how how is that possible? How can a person ignore their own pain, their own desires, their own interests, and still be happy and fulfilled? 
Well, James reveals the secret when he says, accept the word planted in you which can save you. God's word says all our righteous acts are like filthy rags. Accept that truth. The scriptures declare, this, there is a way that seems right to a man, but in the end it leads to death. Believe it. Jesus said, what is a man profited if he gains the whole world and yet forfeits his own soul? That too is true. So according to the word of truth, our deeds, our thoughts, our self-interests lead to nothing but conflict with God and oftentimes conflict with each other. It leads to bitterness, anger, self-pity, discontentment. So forget about your own accomplishments. Forget about your own philosophies, your own possessions, and your own interests. Then notice where the word of truth does direct our attention after it directs us away from ourselves. It says, fix your eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of your faith. It says, seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. It says, I have lost all things. I consider them garbage that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which is through faith in Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, this is the word planted in you and me that saves us. This is the word that directs our attention away from ourselves and our failed actions, our failed efforts to measure up to God, and it directs our attention to Jesus and all that he accomplished for you and for me. And this is the perfect law that James talks about that gives us freedom. Freedom from needing to serve ourselves. Because Jesus, in love for you and for me, has done everything to take care of our eternal need. So that now you and I have peace with God. So that you and I now have a new identity because we are a new creation. And James is referring to this new identity that we have when he writes, Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in a mirror and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. Now perhaps you've been to a basketball game or two where a referee calls a foul on a particular player in the court and let's say he identifies that player as player number 24. And then you'll see one of the players on the court pull out their jersey and look at it to verify that they're actually number 24. So what James is really saying here is, brothers and sisters, know your number. Know your identity. Know who you are. Because when you know and understand who you are in Jesus Christ, that is liberating. It frees you from focus on self. Why? Because in Christ, you are already an heir of eternal life. When you were baptized, all of your sin was washed away. Now God identifies you as his own. He sees you as righteous. And so, when you're looking at what others have accomplished in their lives, and you feel that somehow you've got to measure up to that, well, you don't have to. Jesus has measured up for you in the eyes of God. And so you can forget about your past, and you can focus on your future, and how you can serve your Lord and Savior. Put your faith into practice by serving others. And one way in which we can find guidance for how to forget about ourselves is by looking to Christ himself. His entire ministry, his entire time of earth was a time of self-forgetfulness. And we see that especially at the time of his crucifixion. Consider the fact that Jesus was nailed to a cross. And so imagine what it would feel like to have nails piercing your skin and splintering your bones. Could you ignore that pain? And yet in the midst of that intense pain, Jesus forgot about himself and he prayed, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. On the cross, Jesus was experiencing aloneness. The majority of his disciples had left him. 
But instead of, instead of focusing on his own aloneness, he was concerned about his mother's aloneness. And he looks to his disciple John and he says, Son, behold your mother. And while others were hurling soul-crushing insults at Jesus, Jesus offered comfort to a man who was dying next to him by saying, Today you will be with me in paradise. In all of this, Jesus completely forgot about himself. Because as the writer to the Hebrews says, for the joy set before him, Jesus scorned the shame of the cross and gave up his life for you and for me. He was so focused on you that he forgot about himself. And so when we focus on all that Jesus has done for us, that empowers us likewise to forget about ourselves. That enables us to practice the art of self-forgetfulness and to enjoy all the freedom that that brings. You know, sometimes there are people in their lives who will say, I don't have any friends. Well, perhaps focus on being a friend to someone else. Forget about yourself. Be someone else's friend, and guess what? They will probably be your friend in return. Helping out the widows and the needy, investing in them, is one of the highest senses of fulfillment that you can receive in this life. Putting a smile on someone else's faith is a very worthwhile activity. And not only does it help them, it honors Jesus. Listen to how the Apostle James closes out this section. He says, Religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this, to look after orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. Religion is the practice of one's faith. A living and active faith forgets about self, and is looking toward the needs of others, and it finds fulfillment in doing that. May the Lord grant you a fulfilled life as you, following the example of Jesus, motivated by his self-forgetfulness in your behalf, become self-forgetful in the service of him by serving others. And I'd like to close by focusing on one more point of this text, we touched on it already, and that is, uh, be slow to become angry. Angry people are destructive people. In my own life, when I've been angry, that brings harm to myself, and oftentimes my words and my actions bring harm to others. And so the next time you are angry, I want you to ask yourself this question. Am I angry because God's will was violated and because someone else's interests aren't being served? Or am I angry because my will is being violated and my interests are not being served? If the latter is the case, then my anger is not a righteous anger. Consider the two times in his ministry when Jesus is recorded as being angry. On both of those occasions, he was in the Lord's temple. And notice what Jesus had to say. How dare you turn my father's house into a market? Was Jesus defending his own honor? No, he was defending the honor of his father. That is a righteous anger. And so if the only times we become upset are when we're looking to the will of God and to the interests of others, um, we will seldom become angry. And when we do, our words and actions then will, that follow will be beneficial and constructive. And so brothers and sisters, may the Lord grant you the ability of self-forgetfulness so that you can be free of anxiety Knowing that in Jesus, you already have a home in heaven. You forget about all the things that happened in the past in your life. They don't need to control you. You can be free from jealousy. So instead of looking and comparing what you have with what others have here on earth, look at what you already have stored up for you in heaven, and no one has more than you have. Through faith in Christ, 
You are the richest person in the world. Forget about what you have here. Think about what is to come for you. And as you are in conversations with others, think about how the Lord is putting you in a position to be able to serve them and build them up. And when you see a smile put on their face because of your words, there's nothing that is more fulfilling than that. And so my brothers and sisters, may you rejoice and embrace in the art of self-forgetfulness for Jesus' sake. Amen. And now I commit you to God and to the word of his grace, which can build you up and give you an inheritance among all those who are sanctified. This is that part of the service where we generally collect an offering, where people submit their gifts of thanks and praise to Jesus as their Savior. You will be able to do this online by going to holytrinitynewhope.org slash donate. It is our prayer that the ministry that we have conducted here and are conducting here at Holy Trinity will continue, and your support of that will allow God's word to continue to be spread among our members and throughout our community.